Integral Differential Case Bearing Setup Universal Shimpack Design Some of the tools you'll need is an inch-pound dial-type torque wrench, a pinion nut and socket with an adapter, a ball-peen hammer, a shim punch, a dial-type caliper, two flat-blade screwdrivers, a 0 to 100 foot-pound click-type torque wrench, a 0 to 1 inch dial indicator, a dial indicator mount, a 3 8 ratchet wrench, a 5 8 socket for the bearing caps, and an 18 inch pry bar. Before we start, the pinion has been installed to the correct depth. Pinion bearing preload has been set to 20 inch pounds of rotational brake wave force, and the gear ratio has been calculated to be 3.73 to 1. These universal shim kits come with two main halves that are 210 thousandths of an inch thick. Then it comes with a bunch of smaller shims that fit in between so you can make up a size that works for you. There are several six thousandths of an inch shims. There are several eight thousandths of an inch shim. Then we have thirty thousandths of an inch and ten thousandths of an inch. We can use any combination of these shims to create a custom thickness shim for each side of the case bearings. Here we can use our master shim and add two eight thousandths of an inch shims and one six thousandths of an inch shim to make a total shim pack of two hundred and thirty two thousandths of an inch. On the other side, we're going to add a 30 thousandths of an inch shim, a 10 thousandths of an inch shim, and a 6 thousandths of an inch shim for a total of 256 thousandths of an inch. Let's start by lubricating the left hand bearing or the non ring gear side. We're going to use gear oil here. Then lubricate the race. Now lubricate the race on the other side. And finally, lubricate the ring gear side bearing. Seat the races against the bearings and carefully place the entire assembly down into the housing. Use the flat blade screwdriver to press the race up against the bearing so that they're seated. Now we'll start with the base 210 thousandths of an inch shim and place it on the ring gear side. Then use one of the screwdrivers to pry the bearing cap on the non ring gear side away from the pinion. Give it a little spin to make sure it's seated. Use your hand to press down on the case and push the ring gear away from the pinion and check the backlash. Now the backlash is a little big, so now we're going to take the case shim out and add 10 thousandths of an inch shim. This will bring the total size to 220 thousandths of an inch. Our goal is to have our backlash approximately 2 to 3 thousandths of an inch. That would be approximately two to three thousandths below minimum spec. Again, I rotate the case, apply pressure with the screwdriver, and push down and away from the pinion with my hand as I feel for backlash. Backlash still feels a little large, so now I'm going to remove the shim and add another ten thousandths of an inch shim. This will bring the total size to two hundred and thirty thousandths of an inch. Once again, apply pressure with the screwdriver while pushing down and pushing away with the hand. Rotate the ring gear and check in multiple locations. I'm trying to find the smallest spot, make sure it doesn't bind. Once I get it close, I can use my dial indicator to check my backlash. Aim for approximately two to four thousandths of an inch. Here I have about five thousandths of an inch, maybe almost six. Pull your plunger up, rotate your pinion, and check in multiple locations. Here I have about three and a half thousandths of an inch. I want to tighten this up just a little bit more, so I'm going to remove my shim from the ring gear side. I'm going to remove the two ten thousandths of an inch shim. 
I'm going to replace that with two eight thousandths of an inch shim and a six thousandths of an inch shim. This will bring the value up to two hundred and thirty two thousandths of an inch. This selection allowed me to increase the shim thickness by just two thousandths of an inch. That should snug it up to just where I want it. Reset your dial indicator and check again in multiple locations. Now here I'm getting approximately one and a half thousandths of an inch. Pull your plunge it up and check again. Now I'm getting approximately three and a half thousandths. This is right where I want it. The tightest spot is approximately one and a half thousandths of an inch. Now we're going to work on the non ring gear side. Grab the base shim and see how it fits. Notice it drops in with no resistance. What we're looking for is it to drop in with a small amount of resistance. So I'm going to add a 30 thousandths of an inch shim. Once again, it falls right in place. It's still a little bit too loose. I'm trying to take up all the slack. So let's add another 10 thousandths of an inch shim to that, bringing the total to 250 thousandths of an inch. Now you see how there's some resistance? That's about how I want it. It takes a little effort to push it down, but I can do it by hand. I don't want to have to pound it in with a hammer. Just push it in nicely with the hand with a little bit of resistance, and maybe with the screwdriver. Now, feel your ring gear. Make sure there's no back and forth play, and that you still have approximately the same backlash you had in the prior test. Here you can see we still have that same three to three and a half thousandths of an inch. This is perfect. The ring gear is in snug without actually adding any preload to it. Now we're going to add our case bearing preload. Remove that non ring gear shim. And now we're going to add an additional eight thousandths of an inch to our original shim pack. This will add the case bearing preload and make it difficult to put the shim in. Use your screwdriver to get the gap. And now you notice that you won't be able to get the shim all the way in by hand. It'll stick out approximately three quarters to one inch. Give the case a little spin while pushing it in by hand. That's as far as it goes. This is where the shim punch comes in. See the gap? That's what we're looking for. By pounding it in with a shim punch, we're ensured that we have some case bearing preload. Give it a little spin to make sure the bearing shim is properly seated. Now check your backlash. The additional shim on the non ring gear side should have pushed the ring gear back and increased our backlash to the proper value. Our goal is to have the backlash between five and nine thousandths of an inch. Here I'm making sure it's not tight in any one particular spot. Now let's get our dial indicator on and verify.
Our first measurement is approximately six thousandths of an inch. Pull the plunger up and check in another location. Once again, we have approximately six thousandths of an inch. In our last inspection is five thousandths of an inch. All measurements fall within specifications. Remove the dial indicator. Place your bearing caps in location. Start them by hand first. Snug them down with a ratchet. Now finish them off with a torque wrench. Flip the differential over. And use your inch pound torque wrench to measure the turning resistance. Use this value, along with the value you took prior to the case being installed, to calculate your case bearing preload. Here you can see we have approximately 25 inch-pounds of breakaway. The pinion and case breakaway forces subtracted from the pinion bearing preload setting gives you the difference. The difference times the gear ratio will give you the case bearing preload. If you take 25 inch-pounds of turning force subtracted from the 20 inch-pounds of pinion bearing preload, you get 5 inch-pounds. 5 inch-pounds times the gear ratio of 3.73 to 1 equals 18.65 inch-pounds of case bearing preload. This differential has a specification of 16 inch-pounds to 24 inch-pounds of case bearing preload.